Now, here's the thing. And I'm, I'm just going to tell everyone here in the audience and that are watching. They said, Seth, you have an hour before Scott Guthrie's keynote. You can't talk about anything new. You can do whatever you want. And I'm like, <laughs> what? And so I actually said, well, why don't I have Anders come and we'll do a retrospective of C Sharp. So I actually have you talking, but many years ago. Do we have that? Do we have that ready? Anders and I think it's 2000, 2004. All right, let's see, let's see this. I think we pulled influences from a lot of places. Oh my God. Obviously. <laughs> I mean, I, Java was one of them, C, C. I come from a long background of programming, Pascal and Delphi and whatever. Lots of influences there, like, you know, Delphi had properties and C Sharp has properties, you know, and it's because I think properties are a good thing. <laughs> Um, so it's, it's, you know, nothing gets designed in a vacuum, and then we all stand on the shoulders of giants, et cetera, et cetera. You know, it's, it's, it's every programming language builds on what went before it. Uh, my high school was one of the, I, I was born and grew up in Denmark, and my high school was one of the first high schools uh, to have a microcomputer. This is before there were any, uh, or sorry, mini computer. Okay. They, they, they weren't really called micros, although, you know, they probably, in terms of what they could do, were less than micros. Um, but it was an HP 2100, and it had a 14-inch, uh, one-megabyte hard drive, kind of like that cartridge there. Um, and we programmed it in, in Algol. Um, and that's how I, I sort of, that was my sort of first introduction to, so how old were to you programming. I was uh, probably about 17. This is pretty cool, right? <laughs> Do you remember doing that interview? I do remember. That was uh, with Charles, I think, over in the, uh, the, the computer museum, or the history museum, Microsoft history museum. It was yeah, so yeah. long ago that we like, had to, like, it was like not even the right aspect know, ratio anymore. <laughs> so there must be something in the water in Denmark, because there's a lot of language stuff that's happening. By the way, uh, all of you in the audience and people watching, if you are, you have to participate. How many have used C Sharp before? Wow. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> That's really cool, right? Yeah, it is cool. All I know is when I was in the shop I was in, I was there early 2000s. I was a senior dev there, and everyone was using VB6, and it made me crazy because they would always be like, we're going to do a variant, which, as you remember, was like setting up a double-wide trailer to store a, like maybe a Boolean. It was terrible. As soon as C Sharp came out in beta, I started using it. Uh -huh. Tell me about the whole process that you went through of like, we need something new. Well, it, it was a long time ago, first of all. I mean, this is goes, I, I, in fact, I, I just forwarded to Seth an original white paper I wrote 20 years ago, uh, li laying out sort of the, the ideas for, for C Sharp. Um, and the world looked very different back then, right? Yeah. I mean, um, we had, in terms of programming, like we had Visual Basic, which was great for rapid application development. And then we had C++, which was really hard, you know, but that's how you sort of wrote the native performant apps, right? And, and there was this void in between. And then there was this thing called Java that had happened, you know, a few years before. And I had come to Microsoft to work on Microsoft Java tooling. But as it turned out, that wasn't going to be because of the, you know, I don't know, the, well, the, the interpolitical the, the stuff. Uh, the stuff. Everyone, yes, the stuff. Uh, and, Eventually, we realized that basing Microsoft's development platform on technology that was licensed from a competitor was probably not going to be something that would satisfy our customers long term. Right. Um, and, we, and that was, in a sense, the genesis of .NET. And for .NET, we, needed, we felt we needed a programming language that sort of had the power of VB, or, or the, the ease of use of VB, but the expressive power of C++. And that was sort of the core the sort of core idea behind C Sharp. Um, and that was, and that was for you, that was language number three that you had started up already, Well, right? I, Delphi was an evolution of Turbo Pascal. So, right. But yes, yes, you, you, you could say, yes. Mm -hmm. So all of your children are behaving well, I think, right? Well, they're, they're, they're still, people still use Delphi. It's remarkable. So I, mean, I saw, so. I saw that you sent me the thread, mm -hmm. and there was this thread about naming it. I, hopefully, like, <laughs> like Richard Campbell is working on a book on like the evolution right, of .NET, right, and so right. maybe some of this will be in there. Yeah. But naming things is really hard. Uh -huh. Tell us about like the evolution of the name name for C-sharp? Well, so the white paper I sent you... Yeah, actually it's not called, very long. It's very short. It's, it's four pages. Yeah, yeah it's and, very and, short. And it, it was called What is Cool? Because at the, at the time, our code name was Cool, which stood for C object-oriented language. Um, and all of our files were .cool files. And we, we thought I thought it was cool, you know, <laughs> I mean, but, but, 
But it turns out you can't really call a product cool, you know, because there are just way too many cool things out there. Apparently, so, yeah. So, so we had to come up, we had to like mobilize the naming committee, and we came up with long lists of all sorts of silly names. I always felt it'd be fun to have a reference to C in the name, because this was a curly brace language and it was inspired by C and, and C++. Um, and so we had lists of, you know, C cubed and C prime and EC and uh, whatever, la 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 la, and even, even cesium. I saw like that. Cesium. <laughs> and, yeah, that was, it, in fact, that made it to the short list. I think we had finally C sharp and cesium. And um, because back then it was like, it was popular to use these sort of like chemical sounded like there was itanium from, you know, like Intel, and maybe we could have cesium from Microsoft. Right. Except I started looking at like the, the properties of cesium, and it is one nasty substance. <laughs> yeah, they, like in the email, it's like, if you add water, we'll all die. Oh, you know? yes, and cesium-137 is like a highly radioactive fallout from uh, atom bombs, and I, I, I don't think we're going to go there. So <laughs> Let's name so, our language something radioactive. So C-sharp it was, uh, and I think the name served us well. Um, you know, I mean, I love the, 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 the sort of reference to, to music in there, uh -huh. you know, and, and the... the the half note higher than C, do you know what I mean? Uh -huh. And so, so it was, it, it, oh, it worked. It I worked. just got yeah. the half, yeah. is anyone else in the audience like me and like half note higher than C? Uh, well. <laughs> Did you get that? Everyone at home's like, yes, Seth. <laughs> We're a lot smarter. So obviously with naming and with producing a new language, tell us about the journey up to now. Obviously, because Matt uh, Torgerson's working on it now, you're working yeah. on TypeScript, we'll talk yeah. about some of that tomorrow. But what has the journey been like? Because obviously, and you're not this way, but whenever I write something, it's like, oh, I probably should have done this and then made a change or whatever. Like, did you have that as well? Well, I mean, yeah, it, it, it's been a long journey, right? I mean, we, we built the first compiler um, probably in, 19, in 99. Uh, we finished the first compiler. In PDC, the PDC of 2000, I clearly remember, was the first public unveiling of .NET and C Sharp and VB.net. Um, and that was C Sharp 1.0, which we then, I, I believe, shipped the year after. But we were already uh, at work on C Sharp 2.0, and, and the big sort of new thing we did there was generics. Yep. And that was a, a great collaboration with Microsoft Research, Don Syme and Andrew Kennedy. Uh, Don Syme, who's now, you know, Mr. F Sharp. Right. Um, Although he won't admit to it. Oh, no, he'll admit to it. Okay. Um, and he'll admit to generics, too. And they did some excellent work in, 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 in putting reified generic in. Un unlike Java's generics, which are erased generics, we actually have runtime, runtime representation of generics, which meant that you could use reflection to create new instances of generic classes, which was pretty cool. No yeah. one's ever done that before. Um, and that was, that was C Sharp 2.0. And that, that took us you know, a few extra years. Um, and then it was and then link, it link, moved on. Right? Then it was Link. Link was uh, C Sharp 3.0. That's where we started borrowing heavily from uh, functional programming. I definitely remember showing Link demos at the PDC in 2005. I think it was, you know, with like Link to SQL and Link to XML and Link to objects and all the different ways we could combine, you know, different disparate forms of data and allow you to query over it either in memory right. or remotely. And that was a lot of fun to work on. And and, uh, and really, we learned a lot ourselves. Um, because as a language designer, it's always about like trying to synthesize a problem in front of you, like how do we query data, and turn it into language features that are generally applicable, not just for that, but also for other things. Do you, do you know what I mean? And that's like how we ended up with Lambda expressions, for example, in the language, which borrowed from functional programming. And so it was, it was, that was a wonderful time. It was really a lot of fun uh, to work on that. So right now, I have, there's a lot of questions coming in because obviously, I mean, you work on languages, and right now you work on TypeScript, mm -hmm. and you've you've done some work on C Sharp, and everyone's sure. talking about like, well, tell us about the marriage of it. And obviously, we're not everything that's happening in .NET is fairly open. So sure. like, tell me about the whole TypeScript and C Sharp togetherness sure. thing. Is there such a thing? It's oh, oh, I mean, of course. I mean, I Matt's and I uh, have a long rapport. You know, Matt's is Danish too. You know? Yeah, I know. I feel like everyone <laughs> so, over there in that general so, area. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and we meet every week. Um, and I participate in the C Sharp design review still. Um, I just don't work on it day to day. Yeah. I, I work on TypeScript and the type checker and TypeScript day to day. Um, and I absolutely there's there's a lot of, I mean it's all 
it's all about learning all the time. And I, I think with TypeScript, one of the things that I, there are so many learnings there about structural type systems and, and, and gradual typing and whatever that are super interesting. But I think we also had some really interesting learnings about really finally solving the problem of non-nullable types and, and figuring out how to track nullability and detecting non-null pointers. You know, it, it's probably one of the biggest sources of bugs yeah. everywhere, yeah, of right? Course. Who has never had a null pointer exception, right? Yet, you have your, yet like, the compiler has leaving, actually... He's like, he's like yeah, yeah the, the, not, not me. Right, <laughs> but those guys haven't, but, but the rest are still here. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and through the work we did in TypeScript, we actually learned a lot about how you can use control flow analysis to, to sort of alter the type of a variable based on the logic that led to the point in execution where you're at. So if you have an if statement that checks for null, you could, in a sense, narrow the type and remove the null from the type of X in that guarded if statement. Uh -huh. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's work that we, we've done and that has been in TypeScript now for several years, and that's actually making its way into C Sharp 8.0. Yeah, that's I saw that. Itself. Like, like, And I think that's fantastic. I'm so excited about that work. And, um, and it, like, like, I've heard that people have turned that on and been surprised, like, because you, you have to turn this on. Like, we're not going to force everything to not be null right, now, but right. you go in there, you opt in, and all of a sudden your code lights up, and it's like, Hey, you're not checking for this here. It, the hard part about this work is not so much understanding how to do it, but more how to fit it into a, an ecosystem the size of, of C Sharp and right. not break everything. Do you know what I mean? Right. Um, and and this, is, this is cool, right? Because like I said, uh, the first moment I was able to switch to C Sharp, we did. And I remember writing the old school WinForms app and being able to do some very productive stuff early on. Are you surprised that, like, two questions. The first one is, are you surprised at the uptake that it's had, number one? And the second is, are you surprised how it's been able to evolve? Because technology has changed a lot yeah, since, yeah. since C Sharp was created. So surprised on the uptake, surprised on how it's waded through technology. Of course, of course I'm surprised at the uptake. I mean, it's, it's like I'm just this, this guy from Denmark, you know, who so happened to, to arrive here, right, and have Microsoft put its mic behind me creating a programming language. You don't get that opportunity too often. And obviously, that is that. Can, how can that not be a surprising thing to have happened in your life? Right. right. So, so yes, I'm always surprised. But I feel like, you know, I've, 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 I feel like we've done good work and that we and we really we really work hard to still do good work on on the language. But languages have an arc, you know, like yep. like one oh, it's like a green field. You can do anything you want. Right. But as you mature, and, and C Sharp has definitely matured, yeah. you have to be much more judicious about what you add. Because you can add, but you can never take away, right? And, and, and we've already added a lot. Yeah. Right? And, and so, so we got to think real hard about what we do. And, and we take, I think one of the reasons why we're still used so much is that we really take backwards compatibility very, very seriously. Right. We don't want to just gratuitously break people's code in the name of New cleaning something up right. or, or making it a little better. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, because, yeah. because broken code is never better for anybody. You That's know? true. So, yeah. And I, I'm just realizing that that email you sent to me was 20 years ago. I know. Look at my hair. I mean, well, I mean, you, I, I was going to say in that video from uh, 2004, you look the same. So you must be a vampire or something. Is that is no, that no, speaking? no? I'm, I'm, uh, I've definitely, I've been doing this for a long time now. It's, it's more than 35 years. Now, look, so I, I'm going to take an indulgence here because one time I, I got to talk to Anders about, you know, because you were like, we're in the lunchroom one day. He's like, Seth, you, you kids don't know how compilers work nowadays. So I was like, well, the Dragon <laughs> Book, and you're like, no, and we did an interview. But I walked into his office and I was like expecting like a bearskin rug and like, you know, antlers. I don't know. I, I don't know what I was expecting. But I walk in and he's sitting there in a team room next to the PM. He's like, hold on, I got to make sure to check this code in. And I was like, I need to be like this guy. You know what I'm saying? Writing code and doing that kind of thing. Tell me about your day-to-day -day work because I don't think people realize that you, like, you had turned on that non-nullability feature mm -hmm. on the TypeScript compiler that day yeah, yeah. and found a lot of errors. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, 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 I decided, you know, after having worked on C-sharp for probably 12, 13 years, and, and, and in a sense, you know, you, you sort of, you ascend into the stratosphere, you know, and, and you write less and less code and do more and more strategy, and I was not feeling as fulfilled as I used to be. Right. Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. decided to, 
to involve myself, I decided to really, I wanted to learn about open source and I, I wanted to write code again. Mm -hmm. um, and that was sort of the, the big switch with TypeScript. And so all along on that project, I've been writing code and I still maintain uh, the core parts of the type checker. Um, and of course, work with the team every day and, and, and do the whole GitHub uh, yeah. open source workflow, which I love. I work at home two days a week, write a lot of code there, and then I'm, I'm in, in the office three days a week, work with my team. And you're in a team room, um, right? I'm in a team room, yeah. No, I love being in a team room. It's like much better than sitting in your office, you know, and just like. Yeah, like I said, I walk in, and he's like, hold on, I checked this in. I'm like, holy cow, dude. I wish I checked in code today. I would have felt productive. So tell us a little bit about, like, is, has there been an application that you've seen written in C Sharp that you're just like, Holy cow, that's impressive. Or something that, like, with something that's been made. Cause, like, I mean, there are so many. Right. I mean, they, I, I can't even count them. You know, it, it's, it's funny. I mean, I, I mean, every time I book an airline, take it on Alaska Airlines, well, that's written in C-sharp. <laughs> that, that, you know, I mean, I, I know, it's like, for example. Like, if it were I, me, I mean, I'd be terrified. Oh, they're using my code. <laughs> I'm going to die. Yeah, yeah. But not you, yeah. of course. No, of there's, course. There's, uh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of code out there, and then you, you're always surprised. My son is into music, and he uses a music production software called FL Studio. And then I was reading an article the other day, and then I, just, I realized that was written in Delphi. Holy I'm cow. Like, I'm like, really? <laughs> I had to show him, like, look. Look, I can finally be cool. Look, this was. <laughs> wow, and he's like, yeah, no, like, it doesn't work. Anything yeah, yeah. you do is not cool or yeah. Now, incidentally, Delphi is still very much used. I used to work for a company that sells components for Delphi that are still purchased quite often. Yeah, yeah, which is yeah. which is pretty amazing. Yeah. Okay, so when you're looking at like C sharp, you mentioned that there's just like we can add a lot of stuff and we don't want to take stuff out. Is there a point in time where it's like we just do bug fixes? No, I mean, we always do bug fixes. Right, of right? course. I mean, so, so, but, but no, I think we will continue to evolve. Nothing, nothing in this industry ever stops evolving. I mean, heck, even Fortran and COBOL, you know, are still evolving. Oh, of course. But they're evolving slowly, right? I mean, and C++ is evolving, right? I mean, C++ just added modules. Right. Um, and so, so we're going we're gonna to keep at it, absolutely, because you've you, you got to stay vibrant. And you just saw, I mean, like, like all of the stuff we're doing with .NET now, yep. right? And .NET Core, and I mean, like moving it all cross-platform. And I mean, there's, there's plenty of evolution left here. So, so yeah. like when you're doing the language stuff, how much of the language design does it influence the actual runtime? Because those two things are, are different, right? The, which, the runtime? The runtime or the, or the, or the, or the, the core yeah, part yeah. of it, right? Because there's the language, sure. and then there's what happens. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because probably the biggest influence was when we added generics, yeah. which was from 1.0, .NET 1.0 to .NET 2.0. That was a big change, and it had lots of, uh, lots of new opcodes in the, in, the, in the runtime and new metadata formats and so forth. But then we made what... I think in retrospect was probably a mistake in, in saying that the .NET runtime is a Windows component and it ships with the Windows operating system and it cannot run side by side with other versions of .NET. And that in a sense put handcuffs on evolving anything in right. the runtime. And there, there, was, there was like a, a number of years there where really we sort of bent over backwards to do everything in the compiler instead of in the runtime. I see. But now with, with .NET Core, where we've finally gotten to where I think we should have been in the first place, which is, you know, runtimes can, can, you, can you can install them in a subdirectory, like they can, they can run side by side, you can delete it all again, it's gone. It's like it never was on your machine. Do you, do you know what I mean? It's yeah. not, at that point, you can, you can have, we have about 30 diff seconds, different the capabilities in the, in the runtime. And we're starting to look at, at things now that we couldn't have done before. Oh. So final words. Yeah. Looking forward, what are you excited about with C Sharp? Uh, well, I'm like I am very excited about what's happening in C Sharp 8 with the non-nullable stuff. I can't wait to ship that. That's 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 going to be so cool. Awesome. But then, of course, .NET 3.0, like all all the, all the stuff that's happening there. All right. Well, it's we have time. a lot more. Yeah. But right now, it's time for the Scott Guthrie Tech Keynote. We'll see you right after with more exclusive sessions and breakouts, like all the developer things with Scott Hanselman and friends at 3.30 Pacific. And Scott Guthrie is even stopping by after the tech keynote. Stay with us.